Yeah, so my name is Darren Lord. Uh, I'm currently studying at Edgehill University. And my uh, initiative with the I Belong project is we run it for our first years within the Faculty of Education across the university. Uh, so where I'm really involved with uh, that project, uh, and I was when I first originated, and I share my story of how I feel a bit felt of belong in with my within my university and how other students can share their stories as well and we do uh, a lot of activities around that and make them feel welcome and involved throughout the academic year not just at the start as well yeah nice thank you and what about you Daphne could you tell me a bit more about yourself and also the project you're involved with yeah you're still muted Yes. Hi, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm a student from uh, Erasmus University in Rotterdam and um, I uh, joined the pre-academic program and um, in my first year, so I'm just graduated from my bachelor and I joined the uh, organization team for the next years after I joined. And the pre-academic program um, is a program which is organized for a uh, uh, first year students um, and actually it's a week um, it used to be a week before corona in which students come to campus and already get introduced to um, the academic world the, their academic career the career that they will be uh, involved in and um, one of the uh, subjects that we're discussing and especially since um, the, the online uh, education world with corona is sense of belonging and resilience and um, therefore to already engage students before they even start studying at the Erasmus University to, to create a, the place for them where they, where they um, feel easily at home and where they're, they can easily um, perform. So yeah, it's a really, really nice program. Nice, thank you. You triggered some questions already, but before I go into that, uh, Rumesa, could you tell me a bit more about yourself and the projects as well? Yes, hi, my name is Rumey Savino. Uh, I'm a master's student in business administration and I'm also the chair of Diversity Talks, uh, which is one of ECHO's uh, initiatives of Students for Students projects. And uh, we are a nonprofit organization focusing on uh, diversity, inclusion and equity within higher education uh, by providing a tutoring program, a free tutoring program for uh, high school students and a mentoring program as well. Uh, we also do a lot of community work uh, with our students uh, by raising awareness around diversity inclusion and our main focus is higher education and the pathway to higher education. Nice, thank you. And last but not least, Flores. Hi, my name is Flores. Um, I study at the VU uh, in Amsterdam and I'm part of the Student Association, student association uh, FAM, which stands for Family of Academic Minds. And basically the association tries to um, give a home to first generation students, internationals, and basically anyone who needs that extra sense of belonging um, for whatever reason. And also we, um, we help out with the diversity um, policy within the field as well. Nice, thank you. I hear a lot of uh, sense of belonging and feeling at home. Uh, what does that mean to you, Daphne? Yes, yeah, so um, it, since it's a sense, um, I think it's something personal. It's something that everyone experienced differently. But um, overall, I think um, it means feeling at home at a, somewhere and um, feeling that you have the place to or the space to be yourself and to express yourself in the way uh, you are. Um, but also that um, at university, for example, you find your place and uh, the people that you want to connect with that you that you kind of um, have the same interests with or that you identify with. Um, and I think that's something, especially in, in education, that makes you feel like you belong somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be a sense of belonging to me. Yeah. Darren, I saw you nodding. I'm guessing you agree. Could you maybe elaborate on that? Yeah, so I feel that, like a sense of belonging. Uh, it's like a family, uh, but it's not your family. So you've got an extended family within the university or within your place of study uh, that you can connect with uh, and identify with and create those uh, spaces where you can be yourself and you can look out for those people that you can connect with 
and you can really find your own interest within that kind of family connection that fa family community that I believe that is a real strong connection and once you've found those connections you can then create that sense of belonging like Daphne said it's a sense that you feel like you're included and you feel like you're involved and you feel like you know uh, that you're part of a community and you're part of something. I like how you use the word family. Uh, Flores, obviously I'm going to come back yeah. to you being part of FAM. Um, why, what does family, how does that relate to sense of belonging, especially in the context of university? Because, I mean, I can imagine that, that studying and feeling at home, just like, like you have with your family, is not the same thing, but you do kind of try to create that uh, feeling, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. Why is that important and how do you... Uh, through FAM aspire to create that? Yes, as Darren said, um, the importance of the safe space um, cannot be understated. Um, and FAM, Family of Academic Minds Association, is um, basically aimed or aims at uh, providing such a safe space for first generation students. Because um, you know, if you're the first one in your family to study at higher education, you have no one to guide you. Um, there's no questions you can just ask informally. Everything has to go through university, um, and the same goes for international students. You know, you have to like you pick up and um, move to a different country. That by itself is already hard enough, um, but then having to deal with this formal institution and also you know different culture, different everything. Um, it's nice to have a space where you can come together with your peers um, for questions, for advice, but also for fun and for academic achievements. And yeah. FAM tries to create that. Exactly, very nice. Uh, Rumez, a question for you. Um, do you. Did you have something like diversity talks uh, to guide you through your process at the university when you started off? Uh, or is that something that you... Where Basically what I wanted to ask you is uh, where did your trigger to, to um, facilitate a sense of belonging, where did that start for you? Yeah, well, no, I didn't have uh, any of uh, the aspects that uh, students right now have. So that was ac actually my motivation to be engaged in projects like diversity talks and a lot of other projects as well. Uh, I'm a first, first generation student. Um, no one in my environment uh, has, been, has gone to university. So that created a lot of pressure and a pressure in which uh, I felt like I needed to do my utterly best to uh, be successful in a sense that I can uh, make up to their expectations because you were uh, actually profiled as like the smart one in the family or something like that. So um, what I did was actively uh, find out um, if, um, initiatives like, like that uh, were present at the university and that was very hard uh, for me to find because um, I noticed that a lot of things uh, within diversity and inclusion actually are around accessibility so you have to know where you look for uh, what, you, what you're looking for and that's really difficult if you don't have any support uh, stemming from your family or friends so um, yeah, I really uh, noticed that it's it's about support and trust and also about other people with the same backgrounds, uh, also first generation students that can guide you through this process of uh, entering university, which was very hard at that time. And I uh, really believe that initiatives that are starting right now are uh, very valuable for these kinds of students. Yeah, thank you. So the, the title of today's panel is Sharing Power with Students. Uh, do you feel like you, uh, as students, are uh, taken seriously, that your, your inputs are taken into account to create this uh, institutional change? Uh, open question. So whoever would want to respond, please feel free to. I'll, uh, I'll answer <laughs> first. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. So I think students individually, it's very difficult to um, make any substantial change within the institutions. Um, because in the end, you know, there are these big monoliths that are still um, very much like, you know, like state bureaucracy. Yeah, it's, you know, decision making doesn't go as easily as you would hope. Um, so that's why it's very important that there are um, initiatives and, and Associations and just other 
more, um, I guess, collaborative efforts. Um, because I, I think in the end, the students need to bundle together and, and um, empower each other for any meaningful change to be established. Yeah. Um, so if I can, can I add to of this? Um, since for me, the pre academic program is something organized by the Erasmus University itself. So I started off studying and got an invitation for this program um, just by on the address of the Erasmus University. And for me, that made it um, very open as in the, the university was there to provide me an extra program before even the introduction week started to welcome me and to kind of prepare me on what was ex what was expected uh, what was for me to be you know ahead mm -hmm. so for for me and I think also for the students who joined and what I heard from them um, that really created a feeling of um, indeed being welcomed and uh, and, and also having a say maybe in, in, yeah, in the university later, or being taken serious, that's what you asked. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that, that the university kind of says like, if you feel welcome at our place, or if you, if you feel at home here, then, then we, we've, we've made success because this is what we're striving for. Um, that, that's what I experienced in my case, but I'm not sure because for example, Flores, you're from the VU and Darren, you're even in the UK. So maybe that's very different for different universities as well. Yeah, uh, can I kind of come in here uh, and just say that, yeah, I do feel that we are taken seriously uh, and students from the I Belong project, what we've been running in the UK, uh, is we allow the students to know where to turn to and know that if you feel like you belong and we talk to them what about what the Belong project is and how you can feel belong within our community and within our university and once we've established that we see that students are more upfront and more confident and being able to deal with change and come to us when they want something changed or they know who to go to to implement that change and from from my point of view I do feel that the I Belong project has helped people to say to stand up for themselves to be students and stand up for what they what they believe they want and what they want to get out of both academically and uh, within their own uh, journeys as well towards whatever they want outside of their degree. Uh, so I do believe that it is important and we it is a good thing to kind of structure and have uh, and students are participating and. Uh, having a better outcome in the, in the long run as well. Yeah, I actually agree with that. And I also want to add in um, that it also depends on uh, your network and who are, tr who are trusting in you. So at first, you really have to validate your own position and where you're coming from, what you're doing and why you matter. And once you have people that believe in you uh, from university, from higher positions, maybe, it's uh, become a lot of easier to navigate through, um, yeah, through hierarchies and through bureaucracies within uh, institutions. So I think that's a really important aspect uh, in which you need support from um, people outside your environment uh, within university to actually be engaged in, um, in the university. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Uh, we just got a question from uh, the audience. Uh, how important is a physical space to a sense of belonging? So we kind of maybe it's good to, to talk about sense of belonging briefly first and then uh, go into the physical uh, aspect of it. Uh, who would like to kick off? I will start. <laughs> uh, so the, a sense of belonging that can come from everyone has a different, different meaning of their own sense of belonging and they feel comfortable within their own setting uh, however they do that whether it's in person physically or whether it's face to face online or however they want to facilitate it and that that's wherever they come feel comfortable and that comes back to how they as a person define a sense of belonging uh, but I do feel it, it works both ways. Uh, so you can have great uh, sessions in person and having that time together where you can see them and you can see their reactions as all really positive. But you can also that, have that same reaction with someone online and in that online 
uh, kind of forum or kind of way. Uh, but it does work both ways and it has done. We've proven it through COVID and things like that, that it's worked uh, within those both environments. It just depends on how that student likes to learn and how that student feels there in that sense of belonging. Yeah. And I think especially in our times with, in our generation with the social media and stuff, we've seen that that it's not necessary for us to see us face-to-face -face live. There are huge communities on these social media platforms, having a sense of being a group or being, yeah, identifying with each other. Um, and also indeed what Darren said, COVID has proven that online doesn't mean um, only, only bad, um, yeah, you know, not having, not belonging to each other because for the pre and program, if I may speak from my side, then um, we started off with 250 people just at the campus. But when we did the online program, we had a thousand more. So there were so many more people that we could reach and that we could engage in this program. So it also offers opportunities. And I think um, it also, so it, it enriches your network. So you can kind of get this sense of belonging with even more people through the online engagement of such in this initiatives. Yeah. I would actually also disagree <laughs> with what you just said, um, at least part of it, because I think a physical space is also very important. Um, again, especially if you um, study abroad, if you, especially during COVID, if you spend your time in a, uh, I don't know, like 12 square meter room in Amsterdam, you know, if you spend that for two, you spend that um, your whole study uh, period for like two years now where you're not going to be happy or feel like you belong um, and of course it's nice to have online meetings but those only do so much um, and for example for me it's easier because um, you know I'm Dutch my family lives you know relatively close by so um, you know I already feel like I belong and if I do feel left out I can just you know go to my family for example uh, but you know not everyone has a luxury so um, I, I guess what Darren also said, you know, like every every person has a different sense of belonging or a different need for belonging or a different definition. Um, and taking into consideration those different needs, especially from different groups, I think that's very important to create a, you know, broad sense of belonging within a university because not everyone feels the same. Yeah, I actually agree with Flores. Um, I think uh, physical activities really foster a per personal connection uh, with other students. And those are important because um, a sense of belonging is like an emotion. And you also have to uh, have like uh, personal um, yeah, questions and stuff like that, which, is, which are way harder online uh, to ask because you don't, maybe you don't trust the person next to you enough. Um, so I do believe that physical uh, spaces are really important to create discussions, create movements, uh, and also um, make someone feel safer within the university. And then also, if you have like an assigned place within the university, it will really help if you, um, yeah, with your positionality within uh, the university and how you feel like you belong at the university uh, instead of an online connection in which it, it's more static and uh, more passive, uh, while in person it's way more active and uh, personal. If I can add more to that. Um... I think it's also good to realize that not everyone has the same home situation. So I already uh, used the example of international students who might live in a small room, in a small dorm. Maybe they have a big apartment, you know, you, you never know. Um, but in the same sense, people from, for example, the Netherlands, they don't necessarily all have a fun or spacious um, situation at home. And then having this physical space within a university that you can go to to study or to hang out or, to, you know, meet other people um, that will, you know, really boost a sense of belonging and really make you feel safe and at home in a space where you should be able to feel safe and at home. Yeah, I think uh, we see that Corona is one of the big challenges now. I mean, we would have been uh, all together if not for, for COVID. Sadly, we're stuck uh, online from the comfort of our own homes, luckily. Um, I have a more personal question. Uh, so who or, or what uh, would positively impact your own sense of belonging at the university? Um, Darren, would you like to answer that? Yeah. 
so for me, from my personal point of view, uh, I believe that you're like, pro we have program leaders here at Edge Hill uh, who lead the course and lead whatever uh, course you're on. And there, that's where the initial belonging comes from. You connect it to that group at first. That's your connection. That's your community. Uh, and once you arrive, that's the first person you meet uh, along with your other peers and your other colleagues uh, who are doing the same program. That's your first connection and that's where you begin that belonging journey. Uh, and that doesn't finish uh, when you graduate and when you leave. It continues and continues to carry on. Uh, and especially within my university, uh, we have like the, the Annum and things like that uh, and meetups and things like that that can always, you can meet new people and have that sense of belonging even after you've graduated and after you've left whatever you do. Uh, so I do believe it comes from that first day, that first week, uh, having that group and having that one person that you feel like I belong to this section, I belong to this faculty. Uh, and then it moves on to your other teachers and other, other colleagues within the, within the faculty and who you're taught by. And also the peers in your class and in your uh, programme as well. They can be that real sense of belonging as well. They can uh, come into that on its own as well it's not just about the academic side of it it's also about having that that time to be able to study in an environment where it's maybe less pressured without a teacher or a tutor uh, and you've got that time to kind of say I don't get it or uh, discuss with your peers and talk about things that you might not be getting and you feel that community kind of building you meet new people as you do it each each day you'll be always meeting new people and you'll always build building on that sense of belonging. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know we went to the same university, same faculty, in fact, and that's quite a, a tight knit community. Um, has that also positively impacted your, your sense of belonging? Or I can also imagine that if you don't fit in that it actually enhances that, that exclusion even more. I don't know how you personally experienced it. Yes, true. So indeed, we both went to University College here in Rotterdam and um, they provide uh, for first years, um, they provide a, a housing. So you can go uh, internally. I think that's how you say it uh, here at the city on center. Campus. Sorry? On campus. On campus. Yes. Yeah. So with the 250 first years, you start to live there. You do not even have to worry yourself about finding a room in Rotterdam. Yeah. For me personally, I would say, Erndanti, that... Um, yeah, it, it fostered a sense of belonging immensely. Um, everyone is starting starting off there without knowing anyone and everyone's so eager to meet new people. So for me, I always tell um, my friends or people I, I, I meet that I had a kickstart of my student life. So um, for me personally, it, uh, it benefited me. But for example, in my second year, um, I started looking outside my study as well. So I didn't only stop looking into that community, but I also kind of searched for other groups here in Rotterdam, student uh, associations or um, a job, you know, so there was always space for finding or like looking for also other um, sim sim similar people that I, that I shared my interests with. So um, yes, I've had a very positive experience with that. Nice. Uh, Romeis had a question for you because um, I, in fact, know that uh, Diversity Talks is kind of a students for students initiative. So it's uh, led by students, initiated for students. Uh, what is the importance of having this student uh, point of view and perspective uh, for an institution to, to advocate change? I think it's really important and val valuable to um, bring students in into matters like this. Just because um, institutions are most of the time uh, embedded in like a lot of bureaucracies and uh, things that we always uh, did as universities and students bring new perspectives, younger perspectives, but also from different kinds of view, uh, views. So I think it's really important uh, to take these views into consideration because uh, someone at a who works at a university for how many years, 
possible uh, might not know what the actual trends are, what the actual issues are regarding students. And I think we need to have that connection with uh, the actuality uh, of students um, within the university because um, so for us, for example, we uh, we are all students that organize activities for high school high schoolers, and we we know what they feel like because we've been graduating what two three years ago. So we know their needs and, and uh, uh, voices, and we can translate that into universities and into their policies. But we need to be heard, and uh, that's why it's so important for institutions to take our voices into consideration. And um, yeah, to give more voice to high schoolers and students as well. I agree, Darren. Uh, oh, sorry, Flores. I was looking at Flores, and I had Darren in my mind. Excuse me, uh, Flores. I saw you nodding. Uh, I was wondering if you had something to to add on to that as well. I mean, a bunch. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, the, um, I think one that mentions also hasn't been like explicitly mentioned is that most universities, at least in the Netherlands, but I, I'm guessing also in the UK, are predominantly white. Um, so then having um, what, what Amesa said about like, oh, we've always done is this way. And, you know, this is like the, um, the standard here, this tradition um, that doesn't always translate to different people in different groups. Um, so having those voices here is even more important because you're already, if you talk about sense of belonging, if you enter a space that's predominantly white or culturally different. Um, and I guess the same goes for, uh, you know, um, ableist, non-ableist, um, um, if you're queer or if you're not queer. You know, if you enter a space that you're not part of the dominant group, mm -hmm. that has an extra effect on your feeling of belonging and mostly your feeling of being excluded. Um, so it's imperative that those voices are heard even more and are amplified more um, to sort of counteract this effect because you know if you just keep going with the same same old same old yeah. you're only gonna cater to a specific audience and usually that's a white audience so if i'm if i'm allowed to summarize that from what i hear from you is from your points of, of privilege with whichever aspect that may be if that is being uh, male straight white whatever uh, to acknowledge that first of all but then also to um, take responsibility in creating a sense of belonging for the other is that yeah and and also so Darren mentioned you know the first people you see are important like you know the first group but then also the first teachers mm -hmm. um, seeing yourself reflected in the people around you is very important yeah. for belonging but just in general um, also you know, for your academic achievements um, you know, there's, it's, it's important to, you know, feel like you belong again. Um, and those are also aspects that need to be changed here at the view. But, you know, I studied at a different university. It's the same there. Um, it's important to have this diversity and inclusion um, also in teaching staff, also in curriculum, also among students, um, just throughout the whole institution. Yeah, thank you. I do agree indeed with, with having recognition with, uh, fellow students, tutors, professors, that you feel like, oh, if there's a sense of recognition, you see, oh, they can do it, then I can do it as well. And especially if you've never had that before, then it's extra uh, motivating. Darren, um, this time I do mean Darren. Um, we had a question from the audience. Uh, so uh, you said earlier that everyone has their own sense of belonging. Uh, do you think students appreciate the value of belonging and how to create belonging to meet their needs? It's a bit of a... Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do believe that everybody does have their own sense of belonging and uh, we all have our own different needs that need we need addressing before anything else, before we can belong. And that's how we find our group, our, our connection. That's how we go uh, and navigate ourselves to whichever different group we are want to be a part of. Our needs and our uh, and what we need in life and how we how we need to study, how we need to spend our free time defines where we go in which connection we make. Uh, so I do believe that finding that sense of belonging it does take time. Like it's not going to happen over overnight. 
uh, finding that sense of, sense of belonging can last throughout the degree and even more. Uh, and building on that, like I said before, previously, building on that sense of belonging is really key uh, for any student or for any anyone that's uh, thinking of this. Uh, and being able to define which group you go in and which connections you make uh, will define on your needs and on you who you are as a person as well and how and that that can then ultimately decide which group and which uh, connections you make in the future yeah i hope that answered the question right. yeah um i think dr you were talking also about networking or was it you Ramesha? i think that also was it you i think it was me yeah i think that would be also a nice bridge uh what you're what you're talking about, Darren, uh, in terms of networking and and finding these connections, and that's also what you stand for. And um, what I also wanted to ask you, since we're talking about how you guys um, create sense of belonging or how you guys are um, aspiring to do so, um, all very inspiring and powerful. But also, um, what are the challenges that you faced? Are there anything that you run into, or maybe? Yeah. Uh, I think that the challenges, like there are challenges with everything we do. Uh, but one of the biggest challenges I think uh, we faced is COVID with being one of them uh, and moving things into an online world, uh, which was really difficult at the time when people needed us most. We were obviously trying to keep that sense of belonging and keep that sense of... Uh, community or while uh fighting an online uh system at the same time uh and also previously what i said before was that change and like the belonging process isn't going to to happen overnight it's an ongoing process and it's building on that that's key uh and having that uh budget and pressure and determination to work on that every day and every week and build on that throughout the year of a first year can sometimes be challenging with their own academic life and their own studies and whatever they do outside of their degree uh, that can be challenging for them uh, they're new to this university uh, they don't fully know us and we don't know them so building that up is something that I found uh, a challenge when doing it with uh, the first years uh, and it's something that they fed back to us and they said they found a challenge uh, and it's about what how we have kind of overcome it was we gave them a piece of our story we told them how how we dealt with our lives uh, and how we overcame many challenges in our lives and they were then able to open up to us a bit more about how that they've overcome challenges in their lives as well so we we did get over those challenges but they were kind of barriers that we saw in this kind of i belong project mm -hmm. yeah i can imagine i think you may say you wanted to say something as well yes i want to add on to that i completely agree uh, and i also think that it's because it's like this unconscious process that we are trying to make within the change it's sometimes very difficult to understand like what are we doing exactly because for me it's very uh, important and I know that it's important to give the change to uh, younger students but for them um, they don't exactly know like the purpose because they haven't felt the other side so I think um, sometimes that can be challenging to make sure like hey we're doing this for you guys own benefit and then uh, combining that within university and making that connection can also be really challenging because not everyone believes in um, the benefits of uh, the program and uh, not everyone thinks it's really necessary or maybe they want to do it um, yeah we are students led so it's sometimes they expect us to be um, um, how do you say that that we do it for free or something like that and uh, that can also be very challenging if you are not taken seriously, even though it's such an important program. Yeah. Do you feel that often as students, when you talk about bigger subjects and, and things like this, that 
you don't feel listened to or you don't feel as though you're being taken seriously and how if so how do you cope with that if if any of you has experienced that before well i um it's not happening often uh, because uh diversity inclusion is a very uh, trending topic right now uh, so more and more people are seeing the worth uh, within it, but we are still students and sometimes we um, talk to people who are like way older than us and uh, way more experienced. So uh, it's not a matter of taking be taken seriously because of our initiatives, but more as in, I guess, age um, and position. Yeah. Yeah, I agree on that. Um, can I can I add also add on to that because um, if I speak for for me personally, for example, so I just graduated and I feel that this sense of belonging um, fight is something that that is a process, you know, and that's not just set on when you start university, but uh, kind of starts over again. So indeed, and I can um, I recognize in what you say, Remesa, as in we're still quite young young people so and and now me entering maybe yeah a bit more of the big world working you know kind of leaving university this is again um something that i that i have to deal with so as a, as a as still maybe feeling like a student from the inside so Rumesi, you got another question from the audience uh let me see um, what would be your recommendation to academic staff who graduated themselves a long time ago uh, to create equal, uh, quality interactions with students? I think it's really about listening and creating a space to do so. So mm -hmm. maybe even like um, asking people or asking students, will you have a personal connection with, with uh, their experience, but also uh, through community uh, learning. So. Um, for example, within our case, we have uh, three, uh, three days in a, a week, we provide free tutoring with all kinds of students, students who you mostly not see at university or who have a, um, lesser access. And it's really about interaction about, with uh, these students, asking about their needs instead of uh, their own academic um, perspe perspective. So it's... Uh, if I could recommend uh, make a recommendation for academic staff, I think I think it's the first step is to create interaction, to really listen and to engage and um, within these needs and what in what they're saying, uh, regardless of your own position um, or own um, perspective. Just listening and um, creating a, a more safe space to uh, create those interactions. Yeah, so how? I can add on to that as well. Um, so FEM also organizes uh, focus groups and helps in um, basically gathering students to interview for policy changes within the view. Um, and so what the major saying is like, you know, you need to reach out and, and listen to those students. Um, but I think it's also important to, you know, if at your university you do have a similar um, association or uh, organization like diversity talks um, it's not just a matter of reaching out and saying like hey could you guys do this for us um, it, it's it's also emotional labor and just you know general labor um, so if this is a uh, point on the agenda within your university um, also make sure there's budget to uh, not just get this labor for free but also to uh, pay these associations and organizations because it's not easy um, so that's just something I want to add on you know pay pay people for their work yeah I think in, in talking about topics like this a lot of people are like yeah okay but you're intrinsically motivated so why wouldn't you just want to do this voluntarily or for free but as you said it is still labor and it is still uh your expertise that you're giving to someone or your your service so i do think that should not be taken for granted uh, we have another question um let's see so uh marisha rivera from brighton university is interested to know uh what you're taught uh what your readings are and the content of the program 
uh, that influences sense of belonging too. So do you have specific content that you um, use in your programs or that you uh, have implied in your work? Uh, I think from an education point of view, we deal a lot with modules that are related to diversity and inclusion and the differences around that. So we have a, a module within our first year uh, called Inclusion, Equality and Diversity, uh, which is followed up in the second year again with that same module and in the third year as well. Uh, so you really get in that inclusivity and looking at how the government and other people view uh, our society and how that sense of belonging is dealt with within society as well, not just from a university point of view, because we can all read a book and look at text, but is it really happening within society? Uh, and that's something that from a uni university point of view, uh, look, when we graduate, we want to know we've got the, the real life experience uh, in able to go into employment and further or further education. Uh, and that's something from an education point of view that it's really, it's value uh, to myself and to the, to my uh, cohort as well. Yeah. Nice. Um, Daphna, do you maybe have anything in particular in mind? Yes, yes. So for our program, we have um, more of a theoretical part and a practical part. So what um, students um, do part at home uh, before they join the program. And there we also have a module just completely um, um, goes into sense of belonging, kind of also first defining what it actually is, but also asking the question, like, how would you define it? Or um, yeah, what, what is sense of belonging to you? And then eventually, uh, for example, in the first module also of the, the program, um, the students get to know each other. And then we try to uh, motivate them to also see the similarities um, in, in each other, see what are the common interests, the common thoughts, your common um, beliefs. Um, so also to indeed enhance this sense of belonging and to uh, see the similarities instead of the differences between each other, even though we don't even know each other at all at the beginning, saying also that there's more we have in common than we expect. Um, yeah. So we definitely focus on it. Nice. Humesa, see you yes. unmuted yourself. Yeah, so um, we actually made the modules ourselves, kind of. Um, so because we are a student association, uh, all interested in diversity and inclusion, many of us have had courses on diversity within their studies, for example. Uh, based on the literature, uh, we made modules and training models um, to provide this theoretical um, a sense to our other students, but also uh, blogging. Um, our students have an, uh, a committee, a media committee, in which they um, provide blogs and social media posts about current topics, in which they try to educate other students through short social media posts or blogs, and uh, they all look for information there themselves. So um, it's a combination of own uh, perspective. Uh, about literature, but translating it into a, a sense that makes it understandable and uh, reachable to uh, to a greater audience. Yeah, nice. I have a question for you. I see my internet connection is a little unstable. Can you guys hear me still? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, perfect. There's a little bit of a lag, I'm sorry. Um, I was just curious. Uh, so you're all part of uh, a program or an association and I was wondering how after your your academic career how do you aspire to um, progress this sense of belonging and how to still uh, work with this do you have an idea do you have future goals maybe on how to I mean I'm guessing this is still an important matter for you Daphne you already kind of touched upon it like okay leaving leaving university uh, and now you kind of have to start all over again within a different non-educational um, context what are your plans how do you 
not only for yourself, but also how to, to strive um, for a sense of belonging for others. So I think it's a it's a constant search, but also indeed something I think Darren also touched upon that it's not something that just comes to you. It's something you also have to actively move on and, and um, that moves from your own initiative in that. So I I hope to indeed uh, act af actively in in finding um, finding this sense of belonging and to uh, yeah. Yeah, so to take an active role. So that's what I'm, I think, trying to also create this open space indeed. The, an open, an open, open eye and open um, just attitude to what, what your new, the new environment will be, you know. Um, and especially since I kind of realized now we're getting that we as students are also kind of um, in, in, you know, we're kind of this student bubble and the moment that you get out there, um, there's a new world out there. And I, I hope to keep my eyes open and to indeed there find this feeling, that my place again. So mm -hmm. I think also very, yeah, um, um, not, not even a negative thing. Like I'm, I'm very um, happy to kind of for this new search and for this new journey ahead so I think indeed being engaged with this uh, this uh, subject already in university makes it easier also to to set that forth in your um, in your life after your academic uh, career yes Great. anyone else want to uh, add on to that yeah sure so um, yeah I've been all, always been interested in diversity inclusion but right now because I'm in the field and uh, working with organizations I see that we need a lot to change and that makes that motivates me to do more so I'm actually really excited if I can um, continue my work in uh, diversity and inclusion and as an advisor using my expertise uh, and my point of view in other fields um, not only in education but also in the uh, corporate world for example um, and uh, right now, my goals are are to create that kind of um, uh, yeah shift from the educational to the corporate world, for example, um, by uh, for example writing my thesis about diversity inclusion uh, prospects. So still continuing the uh, circle of research and combining that with uh, yeah my future goals as diversity inclusion advisor, for example. Thank you. I have a final question for you guys, since uh, we have five minutes to wrap up, but I'm very, very curious, um, tying everything back together, again, taking into consideration the title of today's panel, Sharing Power with Students. Uh, can you reflect on how power has been shared with you to uh, create a sense of belonging and a more inclusive uh, learning environment and space? Uh, so power in general. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Darren. No, 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 you. Okay. Um, so I think so. I'm gonna just speak um, not for myself, but for the association. Then I think it's not so much also the verb shared. I don't think it's the most appropriate verb because I think for and I think diversity talks also has had this issue. It's mostly grabbing power. It's mostly trying to attain power um, other than it being given. Um, we still, you know, live in a society where you have to, um, if you, yeah, you're not going to get it, you have to get it yourself. Um, so I think through the support of the other students and, you know, the generation before us, um, I think that's how we were able to accumulate power to a point where now um, Diversity Talks and FM both have power themselves to share to other students and to create change. Nice, thank you. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Flores. That's a really good point to make. I think it's about um, uh, maybe associating it with a big table and not not bringing bringing a chair to the table instead of being asked to join the table. So um, I think it's about uh, the. I think it's really important that students take the lead in these kinds of projects within the power, and it's not a shift in power. It's more. Uh, point of um, 
maybe you, you can maybe say it as activism uh, because you you take one point of their um, mission that they might not reach and you uh, you validate your existence. So I think the uh, universities uh, provide opportunities for us, but it's also because we take the lead in uh, those uh, opportunities. Yeah, nice. Darren? Yeah, I liked the point uh, about the metaphor about the table and bringing the chair up and not being uh, asked to come to the table. Uh, mm -hmm. And I believe that that's where the power comes in. That's where that stance of power uh, from a student's point of view is really good. Uh, and that can mean that's due, that, that I belong can then come into it situation. And then you've got the sense of diversity and inclusion and you feel included, which then brings the, the feeling of belonging, the feeling of your, you feel like you're a part of a community just by uh, that kind of shift in power, which uh, we'd previously said. Uh, so you've, you've got that, sense of belonging and you've got that sense of community all just from that very simple just kind of sh little shift in uh power and change yes i i want to agree to this and also powerful words especially from, from your mesa or yeah that's how you how you say it how you phrase it um but I think it's this is indeed where we're getting more and more of, of this power and also space for us to to let our voice be being, being heard. So um, yes, I think I think we're in indeed uh, good times for inclusion and diversity and to sense of belonging to become uh, more and more important and to be on our the head of the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice to hear all of you your stories and also your your input, your vision. And I think it's very important that our generation um, stands for this because, yeah, it's the future, of course. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining. Uh, thank you very much for your time and, as I said, your contributions. And I hope to see you guys soon live and not online. <laughs> yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. We will now wait uh, for Marike to come to uh, the main uh, room to close the session. So just bear with us for a few more minutes. So thank you, thank you very much um, for this sharing power or grabbing power uh, with students session. I've been listening with uh, great attention and it's really very important um, to have your voices as students. And I sincerely hope uh, that we can move uh, onward together. Uh, and in academia uh, and beyond. So from my perspective, it was a wonderful session and uh, many thanks again. Um, for now, um, it's, well, it was the fourth and uh, final inclusiveness uh, meetup of the I Belong project. Um, and that, of course, is a very uh, sentimental moment uh, for me as the project leader uh, of uh, the I Belong project. Because after more than three years of working as the I Belong team, uh, we are now formally closing uh, the project. Um, however, promoting the inclusiveness of the higher education learning environment 
so that all students feel that they belong and can optimize their talents uh, is not a project. It was mentioned several times uh, today. It is a process. And I am, well, in reference of the title of today's event, uh, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to shortly look back at three years uh, of working as the I Belong team uh, and then to move to what's next, uh, to what our next task is. And I'm very proud to have been the project leader uh, of I Belong in which I collaborated with engaged and expert uh, colleagues in the field of sense of belonging in higher education with our shared ambition to promote the inclusiveness of the higher education learning environment for all of our students. And I have met many students, staff and experts involved in this team, and I'm very thankful for that. So in 2018, we formed our strategic partnership in higher education to promote students' sense of belonging and success in higher education. And during the 2019-20 academic year, we started implementing the I Belong activities in our single course programs with, as you can see here, lecture halls full of students and staff participating in student staff uh, dialogues and activities. And we organized our first inclusiveness meetup uh, at the University of Osnabrück uh, in Germany. And now we are in the final stage of the I Belong project and our work uh, is recognized on faculty and university wide levels and beyond. Uh, and I think that is a great uh, accomplishment, but it's, it's also a great uh, need um, in higher education still. During the 2019-20 academic year, we needed to move to online education due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And as an I Belong team, we needed to redesign and redevelop all our interventions to make sure that they would suit online purposes, stimulating the sense of belonging of our students. And as a team, we were not able to travel and meet each other. And we organized all our partner meetings and our inclusiveness meetups online. And I really hope that we have been able to make a difference uh, for students and staff in higher education so that the learning environment has become more inclusive for diverse students and will even be more inclusive in the future. So what is next? Um, as the I Belong team, we will finalize our outputs and tools that we have designed, developed and implemented uh, both in on-campus education as well as in uh, online education. Uh, and all those outputs and tools will become available at our website. And some tools are already available for use and we invite you to make use of all that we have uh, designed and developed and redesigned and redeveloped within and beyond higher education. And we have learned that even by sm starting on small scale, we can reach awareness and recognition and acknowledgement on other uh, levels uh, and to be able to scale up. And I would like to stress one more time that sense of belonging really is a fundamental human need. And that if one does not feel a sense of belonging, that it can negatively impact motivation and success. So let's make sure that we stay committed to contributing to students' sense of belonging in higher education and that we collaborate on this topic. And today's event could not succeed without the active particip participation and contribution of our students, student mentors, our staff and colleagues uh, outside academia and also our, our online uh, audience. So I very much thank you all for looking back and moving forward with us. And to end with, I would like to thank all I Belong partners, including all their students and staff members who participated in or contributed to I Belong 
for their endless efforts, their resilience and commitment to the team of sense of belonging in higher education. I thank you all and hope to see you in the future. Thank you.